Yo, it's Sade by Paris, host of another motherfucking podcast. Friendly reminder, my single, The Grinch, T-H-A Grinch, is now available on Apple Music and soon on Spotify. Today, I am joined by the homie and fellow Arkansas rappers, Zay the Slime and J-Doggy, J-Doggy Dog? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Man, how how y'all doing? How's y'all day going? Yeah, we're doing pretty good, bro. man. You know, me and uh, me and um, J Dog, we kind of met recently. But me and my homie uh, Zay the Sign, we go way back. So I was just gonna give a a, a quick little f- a flashback, if you will. But uh, I met Zay the Slime in uh, first grade. I don't know if you remember this, bro. It <laughs> was badass kids, bro. Um, <laughs> just a quick, just a quick story, bro. Miss Crudup stayed on my ass. I used to stay getting uh. Bruh, the red, the red ticket, RFP Miss Cruda, man. But I used to stay getting them tickets in the envelope, and my boy Zay <laughs> would always take them out for me by the end of the day. Oh, well, that's ass whoop. As soon as I get home, <laughs> immediately. Yeah, bro, we did. But man, it was a long time ago, and you know, fast forward about twenty years later, we still cool, we still kicking it. So, yeah, uh, yeah. what, you, what you been up to in the new year, man? Man, shit, really just working. I had my uh, interview with D-Dirt last night in the Underground Radio Station. Uh, go check that out on Facebook if you missed it. Uh, I had my interview with that last night. And, um, shit, really, bro, just promoting, trying to hit visuals this shit. And, uh, getting ready for the Red Script. That's supposed to be my album coming up. You know what I'm saying? Big thing is coming. I was going to say, I've seen you been working, bro. I see you've been performing since, uh, what, like since November last year? Just about? Yeah. Yep, and yep. then you just did the interview. So you on the mainstream run now, man. How's it feel? Man, shit, it feel pretty good to be real, bro. Just to getting to notice and uh, just letting people know actually who I am. And just, uh, shit, all the hard work starting to pay off. It ain't yeah. that just yet, but shit, you know. It's progress. You know. That's all it is. Absolutely. Uh, being recognized, bro, especially as an artist, and, and this is an industry that's just so many artists in it, bro, it's, it's hard to stick out. But being recognized, bro, it, it just makes you want to push harder. Um, same with you, Jay, uh, Jay Doggy Dog. You just had a performance um, with Layla. Uh, and, and- yeah, yeah, we sure did that. That was last Saturday. We're going to be in Conway, actually, this Saturday for another performance. We've been booked all month. You know, Damn, we're trying man, you to just had an interview, month, too. Yup. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we just so, had an interview with Rise to Fame TV. Shout out him. Uh, just real quick, you know, being in the game for a minute now, and I know there were, uh, for you, uh, Zay, there were some speed bumps along the way. You know, you might have got deterred a couple times, uh, you know, whether you want, didn't really, you know, take it serious um, as much as you do now. But being in the game for a minute now, understanding how this music shit works, what is some advice you would give to an inspiring, aspiring or upcoming rapper? I mean, honestly, shit, I mean, find yourself, you know, find what you think, what sounds good to you. And, what, you know, that's what you go, I feel like you should go with, honestly. You know, it's all about finding yourself. I think, you know, when niggas try to rap, they do too much of trying to do what they hear and try to do it for the people instead of finding themselves first. And uh, really, shit, I ain't had myself in this rap shit for a long time, so I wasn't really doing it. So shit, and then when I came in this time last year, it's like nigga found yourself. So shit, I'm here now. Yeah, I was gonna say I remember uh back in 2016, we was at my house and we was uh talking ideas and stuff uh with the music stuff. I had been doing it maybe maybe a couple years uh recording wise, and you had been doing it, I know, since middle school. Um, but you know, it, it never that collab never happened. We talked about it, but we both were going through our things. We were both finding ourselves as artists. But uh, I think we're both at that point where we're like comfortable with who we are. We got our sound and everything. So it's just a blessing, bro. Um, talk to us about Zay the Slime, who he is, and what led you on your journey to be an artist that you have become now. Man, honestly, shit. You know, a uh, long little savage, but uh, shit, once it had the shit happened with my cousin, you know, um, I know it's how much he liked music and how much he loved this shit. And how when he started the label, you know what I'm saying? And I just know, kind of, I ain't want to let this shit die. So you know, after I put out the album, you know, I was really just gonna do that for the city. 
And then I started noticing like on Instagram how people outside the world are becoming like, yo, bro, that shit fire when you got something else coming up. And then, you know what I'm saying? That's really how I link with my nigga here, just yeah. off music shit. And it was just like, you know, okay, I'm gonna drop a mixtape to see how they go. Drop my mixtape, that shit did way better than what I thought. Then it started getting a little real. You know what I'm saying? Then motherfuckers hit me like Sauce Walker hit me with like shit down south fire. You know what I'm saying? Adrian Bruna hit me like yeah, down south the shit, bro. Like, you know, it was just little people here and there. And then all the interviews and all the shows. And then, you know what I'm saying? Now it's just the red script. You know, I feel like even now, the, the shit that I'm doing now, like the mixtape, it was cool. But like the red script now is that that's what that to me is what's gonna really make Zay Slime. Cause you know what I'm saying? I feel like everything was a stepping stone. So even like the album for Kenny, you know what I'm saying? That's what that was. Now, you know, my mixtape now is here, but now I feel like this album coming up, like that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna be Zay Slime for sure. Hey man, long live Eastside Savage. Um, we knew him as Kenny Kelly, of course. And we're gonna talk about Kenny uh, a little bit later in the in the show but uh i hadn't realized you were reaching these audiences and reaching uh guys like sauce walk and stuff and that's what's up bro yeah i ain't talked to a couple of them bro for you know what i'm saying i've been chopping it up with a couple people now for a while bro it's just you know what i'm saying all this shit is in the music game you gotta spend money to make money i spend money you know what i'm saying so you know not, you know not get your views up there but spend money with the right promo and the right bloggers and shit you know it's all what I'm about saying? Investing. Yeah, pretty much like my nigga said, getting yourself right. And once you do that, you know what I'm saying? It's a little different after that, you know? Because, going back you know, to what uh going back to what Jay said, yeah, bro, uh you can't expect people to invest in you if you don't invest in yourself. So you start investing in yourself, exactly. Yeah. Put into perspective, how old are you guys? I know, but let's uh let the listeners know. I'm twenty two, I'll be twenty three in March. Shit, I'm 23 and um, my birthday actually next Monday. Uh, I'll be 24 next Monday on the first. So shit. Damn, happy yeah. early birthday. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate. It. <laughs> how long you uh you been at your craft? And and I know we probably touched on this a little bit, but um, how long have you been on your craft, uh, Zayda Slam and then J Dog? Uh, she want to her, bro. I've been doing this like I've been one two since I was 15. You know. You don't really take it serious, you know, like, like everybody say. But I really started taking it serious when I was like 18, 19, when I was fresh out of high school, didn't really have much to do anymore. So I started putting music towards what I thought and how I felt and to what I wanted to hear instead of, you know, listening to everybody else. So you started at, uh, you said 15, but you didn't take it. Got yeah. you, got you. What about you, Zay? Shit, I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was literally about last year, 2021, uh, when uh, Kenny Daddy gave me, or 2122, when uh, Kenny Daddy basically gave me the right set of label, you know what I'm saying? Blessed me to take it over. And it was just like, and I said, after the album, the shit got a little cool. And then after I mixtape, my mixtape, it was just like, okay, you know what I'm saying? This might be with my lane. And so it was just like, shit, you know? Cause like, you know, even, you know, after today, like this is a nigga third or fourth interview. So, you know what I'm saying? This is bliss that keep coming away. Absolutely. Media run, bro. It's just take take it, enjoy it, and uh, keep running with it, bro. Uh, give us a peek inside your head and on what your creation process is like when you get in the studio or before you get to the studio. How do you come up with your songs and, and your ideas? Uh, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. My shit more like uh, it's preparated. Like, uh, man, like I go to either the band mom I'm uh, reaching out to other producers and shit, but shit, for the most part, bro, uh, let's say I'm going to the booth on a Wednesday. Like, I done worked on a song that Monday and Tuesday already. So, like, when I go to the booth, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, already prepared. Yeah, yeah, so I'm one of them. I don't really. I don't really freestyle, you know what I'm saying? I really sure. write out my shit, everything got really done. Like, I could literally come do the song. I could pay for an hour session or a two hour session, but I can come do the song in like 15, 20 minutes and just sit there and let them mix and master it over the rest of the time. Cause, you know what I'm saying? The song got already done. I, you know what I'm saying? So it'd be like that. In that aspect, me and you are very similar. Uh, I do not freestyle. I, I, here and there, but I gotta write my shit, bro. Yeah. Same for yeah. you, Jay? Yeah, I don't freestyle at all, bro. 
Ain't nothing wrong with that. Some people got the freestyle talent and can't write. Some people got the writing talent and can't uh, freestyle. So, exactly. yeah, and that shit be weird. Because uh, most niggas that freestyle hate writing. And it's like when you exactly. make them write, they struggle. Uh-huh. They... Yeah, I got a bad memory, bro. I can't. No. Nah. <laughs> it don't I work like that. that. Shit. Yeah. Uh, coming into 2021, it's a new year, but the pandemic doesn't magically go away. What's your end goal for this year? And with all the hurdles that life is throwing us, how do you plan on overcoming and achieving these goals? Man, like my man Jadok said, invest in yourself this year, man. That shit really, in a way, like goes a long way. Like, I'm not trying to be funny. This year as a whole, like last year, Arkansas got put on, like, you know what I'm saying, put on this spot watch for music. So it's like, this year, they going to be wait, waiting on a lot of Arkansas music to come up. So oh, it's cool to, you know what I'm saying, hurry up and fool with bloggers, you know what I'm saying? Like the Texas bloggers, you know what I'm saying? I miss with Busy TV a lot. Shout out to him. I miss the Dallas, Dallas Globe, you know, the Arkansas or you know what I'm saying? Any bloggers, you know, Spade TV, you know, any, you know what I'm saying, thing that can just get your name out there because these bloggers really hot. That's what these people oh. go by. Like, that's how they find out, you know what I'm saying, what us do, you know what I'm saying, what we do every day anyway. People like you, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to shit like that, like, this is a year that where people might, you know what I'm saying, I would, the best thing I could say is spend your money on yourself because you don't know where this shit going to go. Because music is at a time and a place in, in life to where shit, that's all people do. Like, it really ain't nothing but visuals or putting your headphones in, like, that's what people want to do. They want to listen to music. So, shit, it's out there. You touched on the uh, Arkansas music scene, so I'm going to uh, ask you about that real quick. Uh, you said uh, about last year, you know, it started emerging. And I and I would say um, it's like over the past five years, it's been like a stop, a start and stop thing. But uh, as of recently, yeah, and but as of recently, it's been like, so many artists are coming out of Arkansas. The, the music scene is like nice right now. Uh, so I just wanted to get you guys take on that. Cause for, for me, I think how we had the Florida rap scene not too long ago with guys like uh, XXX and Tassian, Ski, Kodak Pump, Denzel Curry, all those guys. I think Arkansas's music scene is next. So I just wanted to get your, your take and your uh, thoughts on that. I mean, like, bro, I've, I've seen a lot of artists who definitely have it, but either don't have the production right, don't invest in themselves right. Like, there's plenty of potential here in Arkansas. There's plenty of potential here in just our town. You know what I'm saying? But we have to put the right effort and the right movement towards what we have going on. If you look at music as a passion, then, you know, you got to put the effort towards that. If you look at it as you're going to play around with it, then play around with it. But you got to pick sides with that. You know, you, you can't be one foot in, one foot out. Yeah, I agree. Same. Yeah, bro. Um, I don't know. It was like a it was like a start and stop thing. Uh, and a lot of, you know, a lot of guys, they believe the persona so much that they think they're too good to link with with other guys. But exactly. uh, and, and I think that's what has caused this start and stop thing going on, because it. I've been viewing it since like 2015, 2016, especially going to college and meeting actual other artists. Cause like at the time in my hometown, there were, there were some there, but I didn't know about them. Um, but like now there's so many, you got Laylum, you got Zay the Slime, you got my boy Rhythm. Uh, that's all in, in Hot Springs alone. You got, you know, me and my team. And then you got Bro. these guys in Little Rock, you know, shout out Al Taylor. Uh, I'm sure you guys know know some some, some names. Uh, yeah, going Joker up. Beast and Goonie and all them. Like, I mean, yeah, like, like the thing is, it, it was this time. Because, you know, you notice how Atlanta rappers all came together and how Atlanta just all blew up as one. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's all Arkansas need. Like, no matter what part of the city you in. As long as niggas come together as one and just put on for the state of Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? Get them collabs that's out. out. You know, yes, that's, sir. Make that's why I say, you know, one of my biggest things is coming up on, you know, this next project is, you know, it's going to be about 15 to 16 songs on it. And, um, you know, I got, I'm going to put a lot of singles, but, you know, it's going to be a couple features, you know, six to seven of them for sure, because it's like, I, I want to go ahead and spread their love. But, you know, most so, you know, and this, you know what I'm saying? But with the people that you know, I know that sound that I personally like in High Springs. And well, in, in High Springs, Little Rock, and all around the Arkansas area. 
And real quick, uh, shout out also uh, Colin Foxworth, shout out PBE. Shout out my cousins, Milton and Versus. They've been going strong for a long time now. Yeah, they uh, But, uh, and I, I, we're going to get to your project because what I've noticed with uh, the the music that you've been putting out, the two projects that you've put out the, and probably the one you're working on now, you are working with a lot of these guys. You are you know, not shying away from collabs and, and that's what I like to see. But uh, real quick, who are some cats, be it local or already established in the industry that you would like to work with in the future? Oh, shit. For the most part, you know, um, you know, definitely that's already on, I guess you would say, you know, niggas like Sauce. Uh, you know, him and his team, I fought with them. Uh, you know, local wise, you know what I'm saying? Joker Bees and them and they group, you know what I'm saying? That was a big thing last night doing that interview with them. That was a big come over with that platform. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Definitely my nigga right here, of course, you know what I'm saying? He gonna be on the album, so I definitely want to check that one out. Sure, we don't need a collab from you. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of <laughs> shit going on. Say less. Uh, and then um, while we're on the topic of artists, who are some artists influencing you and your sound, whether growing up or even now? Oh, shit, man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm kind of like J-Dog in that perspective. Like, it's like, I listen to this person, that person, this person, that person, until I start making music myself. And it's like, now, shit, I listen to that music just to get me in that music feeling. But it's like, but you, bro, you at this point in time, you know? yeah, it's like that. So that's listen how I listen to yourself more than you listen to other artists. Man, Hell yeah. so, <laughs> that's just how it is, bro. It's kind of like, shit. It used to be like, y'all turn on Davies, you know what I'm saying, if I trail anybody, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but now it's kind of like, Shit, bro. When I'm trying to get inside the slime and make something, do all that extra shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm listening to myself. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm preparing myself. Like, ain't too That's much they can say for me because I'm speaking about me in these songs. It, it's so crazy because, like, I. Like the last guy I interviewed, he said the same thing. You know, he mostly listened to himself. And, you know, guys like Lil Wayne say they mostly listen to themselves. And I never even, like, sat and thought about it. But, bro, I think I listen to myself more than more than I, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's just, because it's, like you said, Zay, you relate to your music because you spitting it is you, like, mm -hmm. it's you, you know. And then you're also critiquing yourself. How can you get better? Uh -huh. What did you do wrong here? Or what, what Man, sounds working, you I know? Protect this what should I, I go back? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a single that I, did, that I just did on there that I know I got to go touch it for sure. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with it for sure, but I just know I got to go touch it up. But the single itself kind of hope high. Like, but you know it is what it is. Cause like, you know, um, not trying to, you know, just saying on the project, like we was talking about earlier, you know, I'm too high for this brain is a whole different vibe than what the red script on the brain. So it's just kind of like that. Getting into your project, since we are um, uh, around that topic, uh, first, you, you do have a few projects out and we're going to talk about them. But first, let's talk about King Savage. How did it feel creating something in honor of someone you held so close and dear to your heart? And uh, yeah, man, did, how did that feel just completing it? Um, shit, it was a accomplishment for him. Like, that's what I mean by that is, shit. I just want my boy to have that project out. Because, you know, he, until then, I think he had out, uh, he probably had like two or three singles. You know what I'm saying? He was working on stuff. He used to make music back when we was in like middle school, though. Yep. Yeah. You know, high school, you know. So, you know what I'm saying? My nigga had all them singles out, all this, all that. And no project, you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? You the first person actually getting to know this. He actually gonna have his own project coming out this year. You know what I'm saying? You know, even, uh, yeah, even you know what I'm saying about me being over it all. I got the ability to uh have his music and you know do what I gotta do. So uh, he actually be having his own project this should come out. So uh so there so you're confirming there is more uh Kenny Kelly uh Tracks that I own. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, um, I definitely, you know, like the King Savage album, that was, you know, the whole 400 Savage album, because I know how he would feel. He would always wanted that project to get him. But mm -hmm. now, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where shit, I'm just going to let him have one by himself and honor it to him. So, you know, that being said, you know, definitely be looking out for a Kenny Kelly album, a Kenny Kelly album for, you know what I'm saying? Eastside Savage album by itself. 
Talk to us about the creation process, you know, acquiring Kenny's vocals and how you piece together these songs. I know some of them were probably completed and some of them probably weren't. So, uh, and, and that was due to his untimely passing. So what was the process in, in getting that completed? Man, that was my first time actually seeing how this shit actually even worked, bro. Just to see how you had to go over here and put like these vocals from this song. You know what I'm saying? You got to grab the beat. The vocals, you know what I'm saying, the raw lyrics, all that shit, and put them on the drive, take them to the person that's doing the songs, you know what I'm saying? Like, we had to go to Kooby House and get the songs that Kenny was on, uh, some of the raw lyrics on there, take them back to B House, let B put in his hard drive, put them back together, and you know what I'm saying? They still, they were still using two different systems, so it was like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm reverb, be fixed, so I couldn't, but he still had to put it together the best way he can. Like, uh, one song on the album that was like that is uh, What's Up With That? It's uh, actually me, Kobe, and Kenny on there. And that's the only song me and Kenny got on there. But technically, me and Kenny went on the song together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, un- un- unfortunately, due to the uh, untimely passing. But, um, so I was, I was going to ask you, how's your relationship with, um, you know, the guys that Kenny was working with? I had uh, talked to Kenny probably a few weeks before his passing, and he was talking to me about the process that he had went through to get the LLC on 400 Records, or whether he, I don't know if he got it or if he was in the middle of getting it. And uh, he was also like wanting to put paper in his guys' pockets, you know, when they perform and stuff, making sure they get paid. So um, just talk to me about like, uh, and you know he was like really trying to bring up so many people with him and feed his family, which is very selfless. But talk to talk to me about first the relationship with the guys associated with 400 Records and also managing this label and ensuring that his legacy is left intact. Um, for the most part, man, like uh, you know, as artists, you know, uh, I gotta let them do that thing even when they're ready to put out music. You know, um, they get their royalties for it. Um, I, I kind of kind of let Kenny Pops handle that part for them type of art, you know what I'm saying? For those artists that's already on the label and like for the artists that I got coming up to the label, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be more so co signed because I got the LLCs, but uh, I'm going to actually get another one for my own. So it, it'll kind of be co signed with that and kind of just work with it like that because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, it, it was still artists that my man had already had signed on them. So, you know, uh it's just like that yeah he was trying to, like like i said he he's he was very selfless like he he had so much talent but he was like trying to bring so many other people up with him and put in paper in uh their pocket but uh you were saying he did get that llc right yeah okay okay um you just dropped the project uh sometime in 2020 titled i'm too high for this so talk to me about your mindset behind this project and how it came about Shit, I was high. <laughs> <laughs> nah, shit, uh, for the most part, bro, uh, I don't too high for this really just came out because shit, bro, you know, stone of life, you know, that's what we sit here and do all day for the most part. And uh, I really couldn't find a mixtape name that was really coming together at that point in time. And uh, I was going to do, I'm doing like a series for I'm too high for this. So like, you know, this one, you know, they had Bob Marley on the theme code. The next one might just have me and James, like Mac and Devin on the next one. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's some, there's some shit like that on, you know, I'm just for this, you know? It's a steady little thing going with that one. You also just dropped your first single of the new year, Tap In, and um, presumably it's for the album or project that you're currently working on. So talk to us about that. I uh, yeah, Tap In, that is a single on the red script. Uh, Man, that beat came together really when I was just, I don't know, I was just scrolling down YouTube and uh, shit, when I hit that one, my son got to bouncing up and down on it and it was just like, yeah. And then the words came immediately in my head and I was like, yeah, let me hit the dude and go ahead and sell this up real fast. So that Thursday, I went on ahead and uh, bought the rights to the beat and uh, went to be and yeah, I recorded that. And I dropped it on Distro Kid like uh, three weeks later. Um. And I completely forgot you had a kid, bro. So, like, first and foremost, congratulations on that. Um, how do you uh, handle, you know, father life and, and and rap life? You know, you're performing. You're probably going to these cities or in a studio uh, late night. So, how how is balancing that for you? Just be asking yeah. as a uh, future father, you know. 
Are you talking about uh for, for him? Come on, for him. Shit, me, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, congrats to both of my mans right here. But uh, for the most part, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jay. <laughs> 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 you were saying Zay? <laughs> I mean, for the most part, uh, shit. I mean, man, that'd be pretty easy. I mean, but. You know, it's about all, you, you got your support system. Like, uh, my girl that was with my baby. So it's like, shit, on show nights, like, he's there, you know what I'm saying? He there with her. Uh, but, you know, when I'm at the booth late nights, he's there with her. And um, that's kind of just how it is. But, you know, I just kind of got to get it in how it is on, you know, a certain time. But, you know, I also got a daughter. So my daughter in school. So it's just kind of like, you know. I didn't you know he had two kids. God. <laughs> yeah. You gotta balance your life. Right? Yeah. Respect, man. I respect that. Um, going back to your uh your your next album, The Red Script, correct? Yeah. What can people expect of it? And when is this project gonna drop? Man, this one, like, I ain't gonna lie, this one ain't even gonna have too much more promo behind it, because it's like uh what I'm gonna do, it's gonna have it's gonna be a little different. Um I'm gonna drop like maybe two or three more singles on it. Um, and then I'm gonna get a, a video done from Live Maze. Uh, okay. You know, Live Maze will probably be shooting the tap in video. And then just shit on a, I guess on a Friday night or a Thursday night. Y'all ain't doing nothing. Yeah, it's gonna be like that. You know what I'm saying? Here you go. <laughs> you gonna bless them out of nowhere. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause you know, I'm too high for this. It, it was a countdown to it. It was this, it was that. Like, it was cool. Like, even if I do a countdown, it won't be like, it, I'm too high for this. It won't be like a week countdown, or nothing like that. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? If I know it come out that Friday, I might not start, I might not let y'all know until that Wednesday. Like, I might drop the video that Wednesday and be like, okay, red script in two days. But uh, it's definitely a lot of more work and a lot more for to be done before it come out. Because uh, yeah, this one gotta get this one gotta be enough for shit show. Yeah, I work kind of the same way, and it just keeps you not being restricted to a date. Gives you time to finish it, polish it up, and get everything in order. So I understand that. Uh, before we get up out of here, bro, tell me how do you plan on putting on for your city, family, and loved ones? Because you're already doing that. How you how do you how do you plan on continuing doing this? Can't say Uh. Pretty much, you know, just keeping the ball rolling, man. Just everything that, that we've been doing, we, we're going to keep doing and then multiply it by two. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to keep grinding, give it 110% on everything we got. And shit, other than that, just lay back and enjoy it, you know? Yes, sir. Enjoy what we with all that being said, I do want to uh, eventually get a formal interview with you, Jay, uh, Doggy Dog. Oh, yes, you we know, I gotta do my re- gotta do my research and everything so I can come <laughs> with the right questions. But uh, yes, yes, I got to tap in with my man, Jay Dog. For shit, shit. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all coming through and chopping it up with me and allowing me to pick your brain. Go ahead. What'd you say? I said my man gonna release that ride for us. Some some big single coming up. What's some dates? Give me some dates. Two weeks, I got you. I'm going to hold you to that. Hold me to that. Yeah, two so weeks, I got you. Told me. All right, two weeks. What's today? Today's Wednesday. All right, say look. Today Wednesday, so February the 10th. All right. I'm coming you in February 9th that night. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. you know what I'm saying? Friday for Valentine's Day. You know? Where can people find you on social media, uh, Zay? And then Jay. Um, you can find me on Instagram uh, and Facebook, both under Zay the Smile. Um, yeah, pretty much. You can find me on Facebook, James DeVore, D E V O R E. Just look us up at Laylum Productions with a Z on the end. You can find the whole group on there too. Shout out Laylum. Shout out Cam. I just talked to him today. Uh, appreciate his wisdom. Uh, if you're listening on this, if you listen to this on YouTube, I will put all of Zay the Slimes and Jay Doggy Dog's links in the description box below. Y'all be sure to tap in with the kids. Show some love. I am Saved by Paris. Until next time, yo, we out. Shit show. Hey, if you made it to the end of the podcast and you're in dire need of more content, then head on over to Saved by Paris on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, or 
brush up on some of the bass content over at the Bass While We Skate channel on YouTube or on SoundCloud. As always, have a great day and see you next week. Peace.